Hi guys, Brittany here. We're on a little family vacation right now, Phil, Dory, and I, and this has me thinking about Airbnbs and the questions that you might want to ask before you book your Airbnb if you're staying in it with a baby or a toddler. And this is based on the information that I have from the first year and a half, almost two years of staying in a lot of Airbnbs and a lot of hotel rooms with my baby son and my husband. Our son is 21 months old now and we've essentially spent the first year and a half of his life traveling around and staying in less than convenient places. So look at the descriptions carefully, read the reviews carefully, ask questions of the host, and find out these details, and it'll make your stay a whole lot more enjoyable with your kid. The first thing you want to check for is the location and the proximity of that location to nearby playgrounds. You know your toddler best, but starting for us, starting around 18 months, my son started to be interested in going to the playground. It's still not my favorite activity to do with him personally. I would rather go to the beach or a lot of other things besides go to the playground but my husband likes to take my son to a playground my son really likes going to the playground and if your kid does as well check out if there is a playground nearby your Airbnb before booking. The next thing you're going to want to look for is the distance to the hospital. When we first arrived at our Airbnb in Scotland, we had just walked in the door after a really long day of traveling. My son immediately started running a fever. My husband got sick. The disaster scenario that you just hope will not happen when you're traveling, but sometimes it does. We had not booked our Airbnb with this in mind, but luckily we were able to take public transportation. We were able to take a direct bus to the hospital. Hospital. Especially since we were in the UK, we were really lucky. We didn't even have to use our travel insurance. We got to see a doctor for free. The wait in the waiting room in the emergency room was super short and thankfully it was nothing really serious with my son and my husband and they recovered pretty quickly, but it was scary and we were happy to be near a hospital. On that same note, please always make sure you're traveling with travel insurance and that you have an emergency first aid kit with all of the basics in it, band-aids, thermometer, children's Tylenol, all that important stuff. Have an emergency plan in place for how you're going to get to the hospital and how you're going to communicate with your partner or whoever you're traveling with. When we first arrived in Scotland we had to go to the hospital. We didn't even have phones yet. We didn't have SIM cards yet. We didn't even know the emergency number to call in the UK. This might sound a little bit silly or self-indulgent, but if you are a parent who relies on caffeine in the morning, on coffee, make sure that your Airbnb is located close to a coffee shop and make sure that it's open early enough for when you wake up and need a coffee. For me, for most of the places as I've stayed in, cafes just aren't open early enough for parent time. So alternatively, you are going to want to make sure that the kitchen in your Airbnb is stocked with a coffee machine that you know how to work. It seems like in every country and every culture, there's a different way of making coffee. When we were staying in two different Airbnbs in Turkey, the only kind of coffee machine available was for Turkish coffee. So my husband taught himself how to make Turkish coffee, which is actually pretty cool and it's really good. But you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you have no idea how to use for example, a French press at 6 a.m. when you desperately need a coffee. Just inquire before with your host or check the reviews and see what the coffee situation is. Check and see if there's heat and or AC and if you're able to control it. As you know, babies can be very sensitive to temperature changes. They can overheat quickly. You're gonna wanna check out if your Airbnb has a washer and dryer. Chances are, if you're going overseas internationally, it won't have a dryer. A lot of countries just, this isn't a normal amenity that they have, but it is helpful to at least have a washing machine in your Airbnb and then you can hang your clothes, especially if you're gonna be staying somewhere for a long time. And if there is no washer and dryer, you can then prepare yourself and pack accordingly so that you have enough clothes for you and your baby and whoever else is in your group. Also be aware that in a lot of countries, the washing machines are much, much smaller than you're used to if you're in the US and Canada. So plan on doing loads like a third or smaller, maybe one fourth, one fifth of the size loads that you would normally do at home. The Airbnb we stayed in in Cache, Turkey, which is a beach party town, was so perfect. The location was amazing and all the reviews said how amazing it was. And it was, except for it was across the street from a club and it was so loud all night long and this is just something we dealt with staying there for a month had we known how loud it was at night we might have given up the prime location just to stay a little bit slightly outside the center to get a better night's sleep with our baby check the 
reviews specifically for other families who have stayed there and even better families who have stayed there with babies or young kids because those are the people that, that's the sweet spot you don't really want to hear from spring breakers you want to know how loud it was from other moms who have stayed there of course you want to check out either in the description of the Airbnb or in the reviews if the place is baby proofed if you're not sure you can always reach out to the host directly and ask them what kind of baby proofing they might have or not have or if it's possible for you to be able to bring your own sort of baby proofing devices for outlets things like painters tape work really well you can just cover up the outlets with painters tape side note this is also a fun activity to use on the airplane for your baby you basically want to know what the potential dangers are for a baby or a toddler especially a baby who's crawling or already walking what is available there and what what potentially you need to bring in your suitcases. If you're planning on driving to your Airbnb and you're gonna have your car or a rental, ask about parking. What is the parking situation? Are you gonna have to be paying extra every day to park? Something you wanna find out before you rent. You wanna look at the layout, how many rooms the Airbnb has, and think through your sleeping plan. Who is going to be sleeping in what room? We've always rented one room Airbnbs for my husband and I and our son, or even studios. When I was staying alone with my son, we had a studio apartment. So that takes a little bit of thinking through where you're gonna sleep, what the sleeping setup is going to look like, and if that's going to fit well for your family. What time you're gonna go to bed, is your baby going to have their own place to sleep so that you can hang out after they go to sleep? Are you going to have to be completely silent in the apartment at nap time because there's no place to put your baby to nap? If it's important for you to not have to do dishes during your vacation, check and see if your Airbnb has a dishwasher. We found that, especially internationally, this is not as much of a thing, but as your baby starts to eat solids and you have all of those plates and utensils and baby bibs and all that to clean, plus baby bottles, it can, of course, be really nice to have a dishwasher in your Airbnb. A few items that you might just wanna check out if your Airbnb has available is a high chair. We always needed a high chair when our son was like from six months old until I would say 18 months old, something like that. Even now it's nice to have a place to sort of contain him as he's making a mess. You could also do something we've done and buy one of these travel camping high chairs off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below. This is what we used for three months in Scotland. It just goes on top of a normal chair and then your baby has their own place to eat and it folds up like a little miniature camping chair and goes into your checked bag. And it's great because now he can use this as a camping chair for the summer and we're actually going on a camping trip this weekend so we can test that out. You're gonna wanna know if there's a pack and play available or some kind of baby mat that your baby can sleep on because if there's not a safe sleeping spot for your baby, you might have to consider bringing your pack and play with you and checking it and that is not ideal. Check also if your Airbnb has baby toys or toddler toys, especially if you have a little bit of an older baby or toddler because it's really annoying to have to travel with a million toys. It's really impractical and your baby will be more excited about new toys in the Airbnb anyway. One of the best Airbnbs we've ever stayed in had a playroom full of beach toys and all kinds of games for the kids to play. This was when we stayed in a really big Airbnb at Christmas with my son and his cousins. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal to have a bunch of toys at our Airbnb but it made a huge difference. You might want to find out the Wi-Fi speed. I mentioned this because a lot of baby monitors rely on internet speed. Sometimes hosts don't really understand this they'll tell you that they have a really fast internet speed just not really knowing how it works so check out the reviews see if people complain about the internet fast is kind of relative you can always just message your host and ask them to send you a little photo a little picture of the internet speed on the modem directly and then there is no sort of question or no ambiguity about the speed of the internet and no surprises before you get there of course you want to know with a baby especially a baby toddler who started eating is there a kitchen are there kitchen supplies that you're going to need to be able to cook or prepare little meals for yourselves while you're abroad one of the big benefits of having an Airbnb is getting access to a kitchen so make sure it's well supplied all right guys let me know in the comments down below what I missed what do you look for when you're booking an Airbnb with your toddler or baby thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video